Um, okay, so this is Carissa. Now, this is a very weird thread, because this thread is in the Death That's Born. It's been around since 2020. It has 673 pages. I've never heard of it before. So this is Carissa Enneking. Uh, she is fat, and she's also a heckin' valid NB, I think. Yeah, I think. Ooh, check out those pancakes. That is simply tragic. Um, she actually, she agrees with me on this. She agrees with me. She wants them cut off. She has acknowledged that her breasts are, uh, completely ruined because of her body weight. And, uh, she is endeavoring to get a double mastectomy. However, as many people familiar with medicine, oh my God, just chugging like a full two liter of regular Dr. Pepper. That's healthy. <laughs> Health at any size. <laughs> oh, you, oh, now talk about merch. The they, them pronoun pack. You get a button that says, ask me about my pronouns. I use they, them pronouns, a little patch to sew onto your clothes. So everyone knows to stay away from you. My pronouns aren't preference. They are mandatory. Okay. Break binary. Okay. $9. $10, actually. 10% of the proceeds will be donated to Trans Lifeline. Wow. Still around. It's kind of weird. Like, it's like whenever a tranny wants to donate money, they just donate to Trans... Dude, such a fucking... If you are out there and you're a con artist, um, you may want to consider the tranny grift as your grift. All you got to do is you got to set up a Lifeline or some shit and say that you're saving trans kids or something. That's it. Trans... Saving trans kids, a 501c3 nonprofit... Every dollar goes towards saving trans kids. How we save trans kids, um, we how about social media? You do social media stuff, you have open DMs on Zitter and Discord. Any trans kids want to talk, they'll be hooked up with an adult four times their age so that they can be uh, given the life saving intervention that they require. Shit like that. You could do it. It wouldn't take too much of an effort and make a lot of money. You can pay yourself whatever you want. You just have to be public about it. Say, like, oh, I paid myself $100,000 as CEO of this, this nonprofit. I think you go to hell if you do that. Mm, I don't think so. Because you don't actually have to do it. You can just hire some... Here's what you do, right? <laughs> you find people who really need jobs. Maybe even prison inmates. I think they give inmates like tablets now right so you just find like a bunch of lifers in prison and they need money for like cantina stuff right so they can buy twinkies and shit and cigarettes and you'd be like i'll pay for every like minute you spend talking to suicidal transgender kids i'll give you like a dime and then you can make a bunch of money and buy like cigarettes and stuff from the from the commissary and then you just put these at-risk teenagers into direct contact with your staff, which is the inmates. And that way, you're helping everybody. You're giving those kids the attention they need from strong father figures who are there to help them. And then you're also giving a second chance to inmates who really don't get a second chance very often. And I think that that is a pure good. That's a real benefit. You're saving trans kids' lifeline. I think that'll, that'll help a lot. <laughs> um, I don't know, whatever. Anyways, so Carissa, as people are familiar with the uh, medicine right now, <laughs> I think you drop another layer in hell for that. <laughs> uh, she went and applied for her double mastectomy. She met with the surgical team, and the surgical t team said, Damn, bitch, you fucking fat. <laughs> we ain't operating on you, dumb fuck. And she's crying about it because obviously that's fat phobia. It's not, it doesn't have anything to do with the anesthesiologist being afraid of losing his medical license or having his insurance go up, his malpractice insurance spike when you die on the table suffocating. Uh, it's entirely about um, fat phobia. So this is the the message. Oh, she she's posting sad selfies. Oh no, I'm so sad. Here's how sad I am. 
Oh, I'm I'm literally beside myself. You can see it in the mirror. I'm right next to me myself. Ah, my binder stays on another day. Ah, uh, she writes. I'm writing this with the most devastatingly heavy chest. Now that's po poetry. That's how you know you're being serious. Your tits are literally still affixed to your body and they're quite heavy because you're so fat. And obviously if you had had your surgery, your chest would not be heavy. But this is also an allegory, a metaphor for how it feels to have a tightness in your chest from bad news or anxiety. She continues. One week before my top surgery, I was informed by the anesthesia team I would n they would not sign off on my clearance after all. I waited 20 years to pursue this. I did a year's worth of planning, advocating, and participating in tests to examine my fitness for the procedure. I passed them all. My PCP and cardiologist cleared me for top surgery as a super fat. Still... The anesthesia team determined that due to my size, the shape of my body, and recent BMI requirement changes within the hospital, they were not comfortable moving forward. I invested a lot of time in this. I put all of this into the pro all of my I put my all sorry I don't know why I couldn't read that into this process, and the medical system still determined that my gender affirming surgery was not worth the risk. They did suggest I meet with a <laughs> bariatric team to lower my BMI enough for them to consider. The problem is that they want me to lose 200 pounds, an amount that is almost impossible without bariatric surgery. It's so impossible, bro. You can't do it. There's no way that a 400-pound woman can lose, or 500-pound woman can lose 200 pounds. Just not, Unless they go in there with an axe and just start hacking bits off of you, it's not happening. There's something seriously unjust and insidiously anti-trans and anti-fat about a system that will approve a person being put anesthesia for a worthy cause of weight loss, but not for the gender-affirming care. That is because they have a little abacus, right, and they, they tick the beans over left and right, and they come up with the, the estimation that if you stay a fat fuck at that weight forever, you're going to die really early. And the chances of you dying really early um, put your expected life, your life expectancy below where it would be if you factor in the risk of dying right then and there. So it's like if you're going to die at 45 from being that weight, but you would live to like 60 unless you die on the table. It's like it's just enough for like, OK, well, I guess that makes sense. Whereas the chances of you eating yourself to death because you, you still have boobs is... Uh, Probably the same risk of you dying on the table, basically. Um, they'll tamper with my perfectly healthy organs and risk a significant decrease to my quality of life post-op for thinness, but refuse to flatten my chest. Devastated doesn't capture it. I feel disempowered, nihilistic, and honestly embarrassed about all of this. I hate to let so many other trans fats down. <laughs> you know, trans fats aren't good for you. They're bad. You see a lot of product advertising, but they don't have any trans fats in them. I hate how, <laughs> how much money has been lost on this. I hate the idea of having to rewire my brain into radical acceptance land about my chest again. I know it's possible. I know I'll get there. But right now, I'm just so sad. So she's just giving up. Like, okay, they're not going to cut my tits off. I guess it's over. I mean, they they said they would if I lost some weight, but um, no. <laughs> I really, 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 really want a surgery, but I would never, ever lose weight to accomplish it. It's a life-saving surgery that would that would affirm me and empower me, uh, but I'm not going to lose any weight in order to get it. No. Mm. Sorry, I like my chalupas too much. Our healthcare system is so deeply rooted in capitalism. It feels rather clear to me that these BMI requirements are getting stricter all over the country, just as GLP ones further disseminate throughout our communities. I've asked on more than one occasion throughout the process to try starting the big Ozempi. I'm not interested in doing that harm to my body. I'm interested in feeling at home in it. They won't, just won't take my tits, but they'll gladly carve out. 
My heart. Mm. Tragic. Really tragic. As we all know, in communist countries, they uh, hand out uh, elective surgeries left and right. Oh, you want to just cut off your tits for no reason? Okay. Uh, doc- Dr. Yuri Alexandrov will see you um, in eight, 80, 80 weeks. <laughs> 80 weeks from now. And we got a long line of people waiting for surgeries. Thank you for watching this clip. This is Perspicacity. Remember to like and subscribe.